Well, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander viewers, this next story contains video of deceased persons which may cause sadness or distress. As protests against police brutality escalate in the United States, a New South Wales police officer is under investigation, accused of using excessive force on an Indigenous teen. Yeah, this is that vision that we're playing now. And it comes as thousands rally here at home using momentum from the Black Lives Matter movement to draw attention to Indigenous deaths in custody. And we're joined now by members of the Nine family, our entertainment host Brooke Boney and Nine News sports reporter Jake Duke. Thanks for joining us, both of you guys. Hey, Brooke, just tell me how you felt looking at that quite confronting video yesterday. It made me feel sick. It made me feel absolutely awful. But I grew up in Housing Commission, so I've been seeing this sort of stuff my whole life. I think Will Smith put it excellently the other day that racism isn't getting worse, now it's just getting filmed. And what we're seeing there is, you know, the lived experience of many Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. And there wouldn't be a person that you come across, an Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander person, who hasn't been affected in some way or another by this sort of violence, by deaths in custody, and been deeply affected by the pictures that we've been seeing coming out of the US. I'm sure you, you, um, the, the impact is quite profound. Um, Jake, people have drawn com uh, similarities between police brutality in America um, and Aboriginal deaths in custody here. Um, what do you make of those comparisons? Obviously there are different in numbers, um, but what do you make of those comparisons? I think the comparisons are obvious, Carl, and I think all you have to do is look at that video to, and, and look at the George Floyd video and tell me how they're different. If that kid hits his head and dies, we're talking about the same thing here. And he, and he hit his head on the ground and, and he could have died like George Floyd. He wasn't resisting arrest, he wasn't... You know, he, was, he swore at the police officer and we don't condone what he said, but... And again, it's the same thing. He, he's not violent and he dies and, and he, he could die. And it's, it's just the same thing. It's not, it's not necessary. And I think that's, that's just an example. That's one example. That's in the last two days of, of what we see. See, I think a lot of people would look at that video and say that that's not nearly as bad as what happened to George Floyd, a man who was on, his, on the ground for eight minutes, um, who made it very clear that he couldn't breathe. Yeah, but it could have the same result. Like, that's, that's the point we're making. Like, obviously, mm -hmm. nine minutes knee on the neck is, is mm. terrible, but they mm. could have the same result. And, and it's, just, it's just about whether that's necessary force to apprehend a guy that's not violent. Mm. Um, the police have, have uh, an incredibly difficult job, as we've seen all through the year. Um, there, there are pockets of Australia um, where, Brooke, you would know, where day-to-day where -day the conflict between police um, and, and Indigenous Australians is, is very fierce. Um, and both sides need to, at, at some point, come together. They say, police say that they, they are um, and that, that they have good relationships with the elders in, in these communities. Do you think that's right? Um, I think that the police do an incredible job in some communities. I think that there are other communities where they can do a much better job. My cousin works as a police officer and I think that that's part of the issue is that we do, do need more Indigenous people in the police force. But you seeing that vision there and seeing stories that I've covered myself before, experiences that I've had, um, I know that sometimes police are heavy-handed when it comes to Aboriginal people. One of the experiences that I had at the footy a few years ago, Musselbrook Rams, my family's really heavily involved, the police frog-marched my 72-year-old grandfather out. And I can tell you now that every single one of us thought that he was going to die either of a heart attack or that they were going to do something to him. And they said that he was being drunk or disorderly. My grandfather doesn't drink. Hmm. So tell me if that would happen to any of your grandfathers. It wouldn't. Mm. And we need to have a moment in this country where we stop pretending that everything is OK and that racism doesn't exist, because mm. it does. And the longer that we pretend that it doesn't, the longer it's going to take us to reconcile. I mean, it's Reconciliation Week. And instead of seeing pictures of 250,000 people walking across the Harbour Bridge in unity, what are we seeing? A police officer, you know, belt up a young kid. Mm. Do you have any hope, Jake? I mean, we're, having, we're sitting here, we're having these conversations, we're talking about what's happening into the States, that something good will come of all of this? Yeah, I do, absolutely. I think it's, it's great. You look at Instagram last night, people are getting the message, but it shouldn't take an American almost civil war mm -hmm. for us to talk about this. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's... And it's about looking at the bigger picture as well. It's like, um, why are Aboriginal people more likely to have issues with the police, right? Yeah. So it's, it's all about opportunity. Like, you, my, like my... As Brooke said with her grandparents, my grandfather grew up in a, in a, a small remote community where he wasn't... He had to wear a dog tag because he was restricted movement in town. My, my father wasn't allowed in the local pool because of the colour of his skin. 
These are not mm. places with great opportunity for Indigenous people. And I'm lucky to be here because my father married a, a white woman from a wealthy family. And, and that's the difference between me sitting here and mm. potentially being in these communities where there are issues. And you're far more likely to be involved with police and, and crime mm. and, and matters that... Well, that's the thing, Jake. I mean, we're the lucky ones and we've still had experiences like that. So imagine what life is like for people who don't look like us or don't sound like us. You can't tell me that their lives aren't mm. harder. Uh, we die earlier. We have less education opportunities, less employment opportunities. For some Aboriginal people, life is grim and we need to come to a point where mm. we talk about that and acknowledge it so we can move forward. Well, the reason why you're well here said. today is to start that process and to have mm. that dialogue and we love hearing from you. Oh, so, thanks, you know, thanks guys.